them. And then I did it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's always me, compromising, giving in, never getting anything back. Good morning and welcome to this vote of the New York City Council's Committee on Contracts. I'm Council Member Ben Kalos and I am chair of the committee. Today we'll be voting on two bills that I authored earlier this year. The first bill is Introduction 2271A. It's in relation to environmentally preferable purchasing by city agencies, while the second Introduction 2272A is in relation to agency purchasing of textiles. Both bills aim to use the city's immense purchasing power, $18 billion, to support the ambitious environmental goals being pursued by this council, and which are vital if we're going to have any chance of slowing down climate change. The timing of today's vote is during Climate Week. It could not be more pertinent. As we are all aware, the impacts of the climate change are squarely upon us and across the five boroughs. We can expect to ex experience more frequent and more extreme hurricanes, heat waves, storms, and flooding. Unfortunately, the storms and flooding we witnessed this past summer showed us how deadly our weather conditions can become, and we clearly need to be more proactive with mitigating negative effects of climate change. In 2005, when the city's environmental preferable purchasing laws were first enacted, this was the aim. As a multi-billion dollar purchaser of goods and services, it was recognized that the city was uniquely positioned to use that money on products that ultimately supported the city's goal of mitigating climate change. Sadly, however, this collection of laws have not been amended since 2011. The stand standards have been updated since 2012 and still today have guidelines on purchasing cassette tapes and mini discs. Talk about outdated. In the decade or so since this last update, in addition to changes in how we consume our music, the research on climate change, our impact on it, and ways to moder moderate the negative effects have changed drastically, and so jokes aside, it is vital that our laws keep pace. The existing standards were also supposed to be reviewed every two years and changed to keep up with new innovations and sustainable products. The current administration, by their own admission, during our hearing said that they did not feel as if there was any need to get rid of the cassette tapes, mini discs, VHS tapes, or compact fluorescent lights, which I just haven't even seen in the store in years, and other products for a generation that are still somehow preferred over existing sustainable environmental friendly products. This is the main aim of introduction 2271A. In addition to making important updates to the city's purchase of light bulbs, electronic products, clean cleaning supplies, and furniture, the bill also mandates additional reporting by the Director of Citywide Environmental Purchasing. The goal of these changes is to improve public oversight of the environmentally preferable purchasing process so that updates can be tracked and improved. Importantly, the bill also updates the language to more clearly reflect newly established innovations within the green economy. For instance, instead of simply reducing waste or relying on recycling, the bill makes it clear the city can now use its purchasing power to pursue the end goal of zero waste and net zero greenhouse gas emissions. The second bill we are voting on today, Introduction 2272A, applies these aspirations to city's procurement of textile products. Textiles are some of the most reusable items in the waste stream, and yet they continue to be sent to landfills. Fashion and garment companies across the world, including H&M, Stella McCartney, and Burberry, are committing to moving the industry towards circularity whether that be by taking responsibility for their products after customers have finished using them or by only using materials that can be fully broken down and remanufactured into new items. As a key player in the international garment industry, New York City is uniquely positioned to lead this important environmental change. That is why I support the procurement of more environmental sustainable textiles by city agencies. We know that DCAS makes purchases for things like uniforms and blankets, we also have a large police and fire departments that utilize textiles. As a global fashion capital, New York City also has key industry players with expertise on how the global textile supply chain operates and environmental changes being implemented. I believe that these experts, along with representatives from the city agencies, are best positioned to guide a new set of procurement standards for the city's purchase of textile products. Introduction 2272A would therefore first require the Director of Citywide Environmental Purchasing to report on the city's purchase of textile goods. The task force established by this bill would then be asked to make recommendations on the environmental preferable purchasing use and disposal of textiles by city agencies. 
With the updates to the environmental preferable purchasing and potential to improve the city's purchase of textile products, I hope that we can fully capitalize on the city's purchasing power. As an $18 billion behemoth of a consumer, the city has a huge impact on the market. The purchases we make and the standards we set act as incentives that can help drive innovation. Uh, before I call a vote, I'd like to take a moment to thank the staff who've spent past two years working on these bills. On the Contracts Committee, I want to thank Legislative Council Alex Polinoff, Policy Analyst Leah Skripiak, Finance Analyst Frank Sarno, and Finance Unit Head John Russell. I'd also like to extend my thanks uh, to the staff of the Bill Drafting Division, Deputy Director Wes Jones, Assistant Deputy Director Malak Nasserdeen, Senior Counsel Nick Connell, and Counsel Jessica Steinberg-Alvin. Uh, as we head into the last few days of Climate Week, with the consequences of the climate change clearly on our minds, I would like to encourage my fellow members to vote in favor of these bills, and I think that is not going to be a question with our uh, former chair of this committee, Helen Rosenthal, and the former chair, and I think current chair of the Environmental Protection Committee, J Jim Gennaro. I felt kind of strange reading about all the environmental stuff to a, a legend in his own right. Um, I now ask the clerk to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on contracts. Both items are coupled. Chair Kalos. Aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye with congratulations to the chair. Jonai. Aye. Gennaro. Mr. Chair, I ask for the opportunity to speak on my vote. Granted. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is wonderful environmental leadership. Uh, I, I really appreciate the hard work. I mean, you know, back in my previous incarnation, uh, I, I, I uh, uh, did some of these purchasing bills, and I know what it's like to work through the details and to get it right. I read through them thoroughly. You did a great job. Uh, I um, salute you for your great environmental leadership and certainly salute the staff. I thank people for uh, voting yes. I'm proudly uh, adding my name as co-sponsors to both of these bills, and with that, I vote aye. By a vote of four in the affirmative, is zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Both items have been adopted by the committee. Hereby adjourn this meeting. <laughs>